Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. What does it say? Therefore what? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting your, all of your care upon him for he cares for you. Again, maintain a, 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 the ability to be humble. If you do, God is going to exalt you in due time. Amen? He's going to exalt you. He's going to, in other words, he's going to make a way. He's not going to put you on some kind of platform or whatever and exalt you. Down his, you know, and does everybody understand? He's going to promote you. He's going to make a way. And, and what, what is this? And it's pretty wild well because it says, in due time, if you stay humble during all of your trials and tribulations, if you stay humble during all of your challenges, he will promote you. And that's why he says, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. But he's giving us a guideline here. He said, be what? Sober. Be alert. Be vigilant. Be consistent. You cannot be alert and consistent without something called discipline. Without discipline, you won't, you won't fall into those categories. Discipline. And that word discipline is disciple. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour or mess up. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you're not the only one when the devil tells you you're the only one. Again, all of this is about a a specific area. God is trying to always give us guidelines. He always tries to give us things to keep us in line. And one of the things that people don't realize that there is a price for freedom. There is a price. Freedom doesn't come free. Jesus paid the price so that you and I can walk in freedom, but there is a price you and I have to pay, and that's cooperation. Amen? Well, cooperating with the one that frees you, you ain't going to get free. So there's, a, everybody wants to be free. Again, when I was in the world, I thought I was free, but I was, thought I was free to sin. Do whatever, you know, you know, I was free to do whatever I wanted. Yes! This is great, man, you know what? But I blew it. I wasn't really free. It was a lie of being free, but we were actually in bondage. We just had a free will. And we chose the wrong things in that free will because the enemy was promoting our uh, corruption in that free will, even though we thought we were free, but we always ended up in bondage. We always ended up in debt. We always ended up doing something stupid with this, that, whatever, in trouble, no matter what it was. That's not freedom. Amen? That's not freedom at all. Turn to Psalm 146. You know, when we begin to first, when we first begin this journey, we, because of our circumstances, many of us have fallen into the area to where, you know, we're willing to do whatever it takes. But then what happens is then that compromise comes. And when that compromise comes, the enemy knows. That's why consistent, amen, alert and sober. Consistent and sober, alert. That's backed by what? Discipline. Without discipline, you can't be consistent. And discipline is an area where you are constantly denying yourself. Psalm 1 and 46 from verse 1, let's speak it. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no hope. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. But happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord, his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, 
who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the what? To the prisoners. See, we've been in prison and didn't even know it for many, many years. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bound down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. You know what? They're being turned upside down right now. They don't know which way is up. They are running for their lives. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generations. Again, all praise, all trust, all hope in the Lord. Gives freedom to the prisoners of the Babylonian system. Thank you, Jesus. He turns the wicked upside down, and then that has already begun. We're seeing that. Go to Leviticus 25, 9 and 10. And you shall cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. On a day of atonement, you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all of your land. And you shall consecrate the fifteenth, fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession, and each of you shall return to his family. Now, the jubilee is coming, has come to an end. We are in the Feast of Trumpets right now. And in, in this Feast of Trumpets, which is the new year. And it's amazing because <clears throat> the liberty throughout the land and the jubilee and the new year starting the Feast of Trumpets, tonight is the last night. I, today's the 27th, right? At sunset. Then we go for 10 days to the Feast of Atonement. So it, even though, look, it, even we've got, even though things begin and end, there's still like a trail. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? In other words, there's like an overflow of things. things God can expand anything he wants, even though it's during the celebration or a specific feast. Sometimes it lingers longer than what you realize. And it's like, wow, we are going to see people becoming more and more free. But there's something that they have to do. There must be a price to pay. Amen. There's a price to pay for freedom. And again, discipline is one of the major things of paying that price so that you can maintain a, a level of being alert, consistent, alert, consistent, alert. What do you need to be alert for? The, the traps of your enemy. What do you be, need to be consistent so that you don't fall back or be misled or be deceived? You are consistent in those areas no matter what. Look at every one of us is going to be challenged. Every one of us is going to be approached by the enemy. Everyone's going to be approached by a loved one. You're going to be approached by someone you don't even know. No matter what's happening to you, remember these challenges are to make us grow. God is doing a quick work. Everyone say quick work. This is not a long-lasting process here. This is a quick work. The long-lasting is done. Everything's coming to a close in that. Everything is moving quick now. In fact, the Bible, the, the, the Bible tells us that the enemy knows his time is what? Short. So if he knows it's short, he's moving quick. So God is always ahead of the devil. Does everybody understand that? Hallelujah. And Isaiah 61, in verse 1. Now, again, you can't do anything without the Spirit of the Lord. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So there's a price to where you and I must maintain the allowance of the access of the Holy Spirit in every area of our life. Amen? In verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Come on, speak it and declare it. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, 
to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called what? Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? That he may be what? Glorified. Freedom to those who have been taken captive. And all this is about the anointing of God. The Spirit of the Lord, the anointing of God is upon me. Now remember, the anointing is the eternal presence, the eternal power, and the eternal truth of God Almighty. Jesus was the anointed one, and his anointing, God prepared a body and put the anointing there. And he labeled it Jesus. Does everybody get that? So that no name can come to the Father except for the name of Jesus. And that the powers of darkness would recognize that in the name of Jesus, it is backed by the anointing. That's why when the chief priest tried to cast out something and somebody's God or Paul's God, they, they couldn't do it. And the, those spirits went back on them because they weren't backed by the anointing. The anointing backs everything that's associated with Jesus. But you have to be right with God. You have to be in position. We have to be transparent. See, transparency brings the, allows things to flow through you, where any blockages prevents things to flow through. So sin will block things, rebellion, all kinds of stuff that will block things from the anointing of God flowing through us. And that doesn't bring freedom. It brings bondage then. Does everybody understand? Amen? So again, there's a price of freedom. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, 44. So I shall keep your law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at what? Liberty, freedom. For I seek your what? Precepts. I will speak of your testimonies also before the kings. And I will not be ashamed. I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. My hands also I will lift up to your commandments, which I love. I will meditate on your statutes. He was talking about decreeing God's promises. He's putting them before him. These are prices that you and I must pay for freedom. Decreeing his promises. 2 Corinthians 3. Verse 16. It says, Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. But the blinders are removed. Amen? Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there what? There's liberty. There's freedom. Only where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Everything else is false freedom. It's false liberty. And if there's false freedom, false liberty, it's false reality. Many people think they're free and are not. Hello. Only with the Spirit of the Lord is, is there freedom. And the Spirit does not dwell with sin. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That sounds wonderful. But then he tells you what qualifies that. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do there in it that it was weak, through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, oh, oh, that's a price to be paid. The righteous requirement is a price for freedom. The righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit, that's different. 
For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, and to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you're a Christian that's in the flesh, you can't please God. Amen. Again, it's a price for freedom. Living in the Spirit is the price. That means you must stay filled. You must be consistent. You must be disciplined. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children, and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So it's not for just in those times, was it? Again, he says, for the promises to you and your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. How does it begin? Repent. Repent for your sins so that you may be baptized in the Holy Spirit. See, some people have gotten baptized in the Holy Spirit because they truly haven't repented or confessed. They're still in a place of justification. I don't need to repent for that. It wasn't my fault. Hello? It's pride. That's why they're not baptized yet. You get, you know, when you come to a place of true repentance, the Holy Spirit's why? Because the blood of Jesus goes before the Spirit. Always. Always. So where the blood is activated through true repentance, the Spirit is looking to get access. Acts 3, verse 19. Burdened that your sins may be blotted out. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that's after you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You always want to maintain the level of repentance. You should be looking for conviction. Don't wait for it to come to you. Gosh, Lord, is this right? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? You know, you don't step on somebody's foot and mail them a letter. Hey, I'm sorry. Usually tell them right then and there, oh, excuse me, you know. It's the same thing with the Lord. You, the quicker you repent, the better. Hallelujah. Sins blotted out and a refreshing time will come when there's true repentance. Let's go to Hebrews 5. There's false freedoms. And there's true freedoms. When a drug addict is looking for freedom from pain, he purchases dope. But it's a false freedom. It's temporary. When an alcoholic is looking for freedom from pain, oppression, and suffering, or whatever it may be, they go out and buy liquor. They're looking to become happy because they're not free. Does everybody get it? They're trying to buy happiness, but they're not free. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Are you learning obedience by your mistakes? Are you learning obedience by your trials and tribulations? Are you learning obedience by your challenges? What is this obedience to those things? This is the area where there's a, this is the price of being free. 
One of the things you want to be free from is you. Amen? You, you're old man. So when offense comes, are you going to react, justify, or forgive? Does God know every time you've been offended or attacked or whatever? See, what we want to do is learn, and that price for freedom is to maintain the freedom, that peace, joy, and righteousness, that freedom that's within. Why? Because the battle is really within, isn't it? <laughs> and if you can't win the victory inside, you ain't going to win it outside. So this is where they, you know, I always use a sock pulled inside out. You know, that's what God does with us. Pulls us inside out. So we can see everything that's on the inside. So things can change on the inside. Because you got to win. You have to beat those battles. You have to fight on the inside. The thoughts, the emotions, the offenses, all of these other things, the wants, the desires, all of those things that are within us that we have to continually battle to overcome. So there is a price for that freedom. Again, it's going to take, it, its foundation is discipline. That is a choice that you make. That choice that you say, you know what? I'm not going back. I don't care what the price is. I'm not going back to that way of life. I'm not going to run back to that life. No matter what challenges I'm at, no matter how I feel, no matter how much I'm attacked, no matter what, I'm going to stay disciplined, disciplined, disciplined. You know, even, again, so that, what do you, one of the things that we're breaking off is the area that we're allowing the feelings to maintain our control. You know, not everybody who feels great when they first come into the service, do they? In fact, you got to drag your flesh in. Hello? You got to about tie it up and throw it in the presence of God. Flesh hates God's presence until it is dead. But after you've sung a few songs, it's like, oh, yes. I can't believe. You know, you're waiting for that breakthrough to where the flesh finally goes, ooh. Because you got to beat it down, just like a dog. A little choo choo wire on your ankle. You got to, the flesh is always trying to bite. Amen? You know, those little gnarly things. You know. <laughs> they all got big mouths, but they don't, you know, <laughs> they bite, but anyways. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is everybody okay? So you're going to learn obedience. We all learn obedience through our sufferings. And you got to be a nut to do it over again. <laughs> You know, I always say, how stupid can I be and still breathe, right? James 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you are challenged, when you are offended, when things don't seem to be going right. Hallelujah. You know, it was a famous word we used, God's got a plan. <laughs> when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, what is the testing of your connection? You're being tested in how connected you are with God. Does everybody get that? You're being tested to see how you're truly connected, whether your faith is genuine, whether you're genuine. Whether you're learning through your sufferings. <laughs> but let patience, patience is also endurance, have its perfect work that you may be perfect, complete, and what? So you lack nothing. You're going to get into a place where you know no matter what, you ain't going to lack. God's going to make a way. Why? Because you have the faith, you're connected. People tell, tell you, oh, I got faith, but they're not connected. They don't have a faith. Man, you know whether somebody's walking in faith or not. Because you're walking in the presence of God. You're walking in peace, joy, and righteousness. You don't let things move you. 
challenges aren't going to change you. You are consistent. You are the same. You don't change because your dad's never changed. Amen? <laughs> Glory. Go to Hebrews 10, verse 24. Let us consider one another in order to what? Stir up love and good works. That means respect one another. But when you're disrespected, don't disrespect it back. Amen? You know, you can think, what an idiot, but just walk away. It doesn't matter. Let God take care of them. I mean, we always want to get the last word in, and we want God to have the last word, not us. Amen? Amen? <laughs> So let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Are we assembling together? Does God require this? Does he, does, does he know what's good for us? Amen. Now, I want you to look at really what follows here. Because he says here, look at, don't, stop, do not forsake assembling. Then he says, if we sin willfully, hello. I mean, what, this is, in other words, this is the fruit of lack of assembling, lack of discipline. If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. That means you sinned willfully. You broke covenant with God. There is no, you're not covered anymore. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose will be he thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the, cov the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, a common thing, and insulted the spirit of grace. Now, is he talking about believers or unbelievers? Believers. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. Whoa, what a warning that is, amen? First John chapter 1. So will assembling assist us? Yes. Look, we need all the assistance we can get, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why you got to be careful, too. Make sure you don't assemble with, you know, Bad company corrupts good habits. Amen. First John chapter 1, verse 5. Let's speak it. This is the message we heard, we have heard from him and, and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Again, this is where the word believe means to follow. Because there are so many that say they believe, but they don't follow. Amen? And, and so because of this, they're actually God looks at them as a liar. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in this. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So it's good to confess our sins, amen? Repent. There's nothing wrong with repenting. Again, like I said, you should look for conviction. It should not have to chase you. In James 1, in verse 21. 
we want freedom, but there's a price, and we don't want to we don't want to fall into a compromise place. Verse 21, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So you need to have the word, right? Amen. But he, but be what? Doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing this natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Yes. Looks into the perfect law. In other words, he follows the perfect law of liberty. And Luke 14, verse 25. Now, great multitudes went with Jesus, and he turned, and he said to them all, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever, man, you tell that to the world, they'll think you're nuts. They'll take it literally in a wrong way. They won't understand the deepness of what God is expressing. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see begin to what? Mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. You know, many people bring shame to the Lord by those things. Not able to finish what God has asked them to start. He's asking something very important. He says, you must forsake all. That's a hard thing to comprehend. It's a price to pay. Forsake all. Forsake all. In other words, whatever he tells you, you're to drop to do what he's asking you to do. Amen? Romans 5 and verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. I guess that's the same thing as learning obedience through suffering. Amen? Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than that, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, that we but we also rejoice in God through the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have been, had now received what? Reconciliation. Therefore, just as through one man sinned, entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sin. Very, very important. God demonstrated his love. How can we step on that? How can we reject that? Amen. Look at the price Jesus paid for me and you. There was a price of freedom. He was free regardless of the price he went, he went through. But he wasn't looking at his freedom. He was looking at our freedom. 
Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strife about words, to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. They will increase to what? More. And their message will spread like cancer, Hymenaeus and Phileas, are of the sort, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having the seal of the Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from what? Iniquity. And I'm going to close at First Thessalonians chapter 4, in verse 1. You know, when you run into a trial or tribulation, are you reacting or responding? Are you forgiven or are you still holding bitterness? Are you still holding offense? It gets heavy after a while, you know. Especially if it's a wooden one. It's really heavy. Hallelujah. Verse 1, finally then, brother, we urge and exhort the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. And that word abound more means to get closer and closer. Hello, be alert, be more consistent, be more disciplined. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know that what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. Your sanctification, your separation from the world, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel and not be concerned about possessing someone else's. Hello. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in what? Sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to holiness. Therefore, he who rejects us does not reject man, but God, who has also given us the Holy Spirit. Wow. Who's given us the Holy Spirit. Again, this is a part of a guideline and for the maintaining of being free. Your sanctification is a part of your discipline. Amen? Your discipline is the area where you maintain alertness and consistency. You want to be separated from the world. You want to be able to discern even when the attacks come. You know what? The anointing of God tells you things to come. We should be able to see things through. But again, the sufferings, the mistakes, the rejections of our life, we're to learn obedience from them. Everything that you and I have done in our life, we can learn from. Amen? And put it to good use. That's what the Word of God says. All things should work to the good to those who love the Lord, those who are called. Be careful of your words. When you're offended. That's why it's important not to grumble and complain. Always, listen, if there's that inner walk with the Lord, you know he knows it all, hears it all, and sees it all. And you don't have to prove it all. Amen? You just got to walk it all. <laughs> you got to love it all. And you got to obey it all. Praise God. That's where he is in you is greater than he is in the world. Praise. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for the preparation because we know you want to bless our socks off. And we want to be ready and not miss the opportunity because of foolishness in the soulish arena. So, Lord, let the seeds in the impart impartation tonight 
allow us to continue to pay the price for freedom because we love freedom. But our freedom is from the world and from ourself and the powers of darkness and the freedom from sin that we may walk in the fullness and the character of Christ in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.